One of the primary reasons that we install a server in an office network is to share files. Now there's a bunch of other ones too, but uh, that's one of the primary reasons we do it. We want a centralized place that we can share and retrieve files and everybody has access to the same data. So file sharing is a big thing in a network environment. Now, Ubuntu Server includes a couple of different ways that we can share files. So the first one is with Samba. Now, Microsoft Windows clients use SMB, the Server Message Block Protocol, as their primary tool for file and printer sharing. Ubuntu Server can work in that environment using a Samba client and a Samba server. The other one is NFS, and that's more native to Unix and Linux systems. But we're going to deal with Samba at the moment, and we are going to install a Samba server and a Samba client, and then we're going to configure a Samba server. Now, I'm going to hold off on connecting to it for another video. So we're going to have a couple of videos here, one on configuring the Samba server, one on connecting to a Samba server using a Samba client. So we'll start by installing the software for both. So I'm going to do, I'm going to just do sudo su and just switch and do this as root because that actually is going to simplify my life a little bit. So I'm going to do apt install. Actually, let me do this. Let me do apt update first. This should be up to date, but I want to double check and just make sure. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to do apt install, and I'm going to install two different things here. So I'm going to install Samba, and I'm going to install the SMB client. And that should go out and find both of them. Yes, I want to go ahead and do this install. The Samba server is what allows us to share information using the SMB protocol to either Windows systems or Linux systems who are using a Samba client. And Samba client is what's going to let us connect to that connect to those Samba shows. We can also use the Samba client, by the way, to connect to a, a Windows server, just so you know. Okay, so here we go. We have installed our software. And as usual, I'm going to do a systemctl. I want to display the status of the SMB or server message block daemon. And it's installed the daemon for us and it is up and running. Okay, now it's up and running with a base configuration that we don't actually want, so I'm going to stop this while I reconfigure. So it's systemctl, and remember I'm doing this as uh, root right now, stop smbd, and that's going to stop my Samba daemon. Okay, now I can hop over and look at our configuration files, and... I'm just going to change to that directory. So it's cd forward slash etc forward slash samba. And let's look at this. And we're going to see right here the smb.conf. And this is our default smb configuration file. So I'm going to nano smb.conf. And here we're going to see our base configuration. Now, like some other things, this base configuration also includes a bunch of documentation. So right here we see a global heading, and then we see a workgroup set, and the notification change this to the workgroup or empty domain name of your Samba server. Your Samba string is the equivalent of the, M, the description field. And, so, and we'll see all of this documentation here, which is actually very very cool now we don't want to use this because we need to there we go I'll stop scrolling through it now but you can see there's a lot there we're going to we don't want to change this we want to save this because it gives us a fallback configuration option and gives it that documentation so I'm going to exit and then we're going to move smb.conf to smb.conf.org so that's going to specify or identify that as my original file. And by moving that, it gets rid of the smb.conf file. Now, before I replace my configuration file, part of my configuration file is going to be global settings. Part of it's going to be user authentication. Part of it's going to be the share that I what I want to share. So I'm going to create a path for my share and I'm going to do mkdir forward slash and I'm going to say this is going to be my SMB data folder. Now that creates my folder for me. 
And then I also want to set my permissions on that. So I'm going to do chmod. And I'm just going to give everybody access to this. Read, write, and execute for SMB data. Now, if I LSL forward slash, we're going to find right here, here's our SMB data. And we've given everybody all permissions to it. Now, that's where my Samba information, my Samba files are going to be stored for what I'm sharing through Samba. So now that I've got that set, I can go ahead and create my smb.config file again. So I'm going to nano smb.conf. Now I'm dealing with a complete new file. This way it's not going to be cluttered. I can keep my configurations nice and tight, and I still have that original file to reference back to if I need to. So I'm going to start by setting some global settings. So. Uh, in square brackets, global, that's going to identify global settings coming here. We're going to put a server string. And remember, I can't spell string. And remember, this is kind of like the description. So I'm just going to say Samba file server. That's going to be like my Windows server description field. I'm going to set the work group. Now, let me just clarify here. One of the things I'm doing is I'm going to do a very, very basic Samba configuration. So we're not going into the depths of all of it. So I'm just going to hit a few of the options, just enough to get it up and working. And you're going to want to dig into that config file if you want to go deeper and get more control over your Samba server. My security is going to be user level security. So I'm permitting or denying users. Oops, I forgot to say workgroup equals Dalton.local. There we go. That looks better. Security equals user. And then I'm going to do map to a guest. And I'm going to say that guest is going to be a bad user. Okay. So that gives my real quick global config. Now I'm going to set another one here, another config block. This is going to be for data. Now this is going to be the um, the share name that I'm configuring. So this right here is my global config. This is my share config. So this share name is going to be data. Uh, the path is going to be forward slash SMB data. So the path that I just created, that's going to be my uh, path that I'm sharing with everyone. I'm going to specify my valid users for this path. And I'm going to set one. This is going to be S Smith. I believe S. Smith is a user I have on this system. Uh, hopefully, we'll find out here in a minute. So I'm going to say my valid user is going to be S. Smith. I do want to make this publicly available. So I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to make this writable is going to be yes as well. Okay, so there's my basic configuration for my Samba server. So I'm going to write that out. Go ahead and pause the video and read through that configuration. Double check it and make sure if you're having a problem troubleshooting, uh, you're following along and you're demoing this and you're testing it out and you're having a problem with it. Go ahead and pause at this point so you can view that configuration file. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to exit. All right. Now I need to st actually before I do this. Let me cat forward slash etc forward slash password and make sure S Smith is a user that I actually have on here and I don't. It's a Smith. So I'm going to fix that real quick. So I'm going to nano my SMB and I'm going to change my valid user to a Smith. There we go. All right. Write out and exit. <clears throat> and obviously, your valid users need to be people that are actually on your system. Okay, so I want to restart my SMB server. So it's system CTL start SMB D. And then I want to check and see if it worked. So I'm going to do system CTL status SMB D. And right here it says that we are active and running. So, so far, Everything looks great. Okay, I'm going to queue to quit out of there. Now, I need to set an SMB password for my user, A. Smith. 
So here's my command. And again, this has to be run as administrator. It's SMB PASSWD. I'm going to dash A for add. I'm going to add a Smith. So that's going to add a Smith as a user. And I'm going to set the password to ABCD1234 dollar sign. Just use my little demo password there. And we added user a Smith. I need to check my configuration files. So let me go back to Nano and look at this. I misspelled workgroup. Ah, that'll be a problem. That's what generated my error message I saw there a minute ago. All right, so I need to restart my SMB server now. So it's systemctl restart SMBD. And that should restart our server. Let's check our status and make sure it's up. Yes. Okay, cool. So, um, now I've set everything up from the admin side. So I configure, I installed my SMB, I configured my SMB uh, server. Again, really, really basic configuration. Verified that it was up and running. Now the next step is going to be to connect to this, but I want to set this as a separate video. Uh, we've already been about 11 minutes in, so we'll go ahead and stop here, and in our next video, we'll talk about connecting to our uh, SMB server.